Hey, um, look, we... Uh, Scrap it. We're, 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 I haven't got time. I've got, I, I, what I wanted to do this week is continue on kind of from where we left off last week. Um, again, if you uh, have come along to church for the first time today, you're probably, uh, hopefully you're not one of these people that has not walked into the doors of a church for a long time because you think all the church wants is your money. Um, I was actually planning on speaking this morning on giving. We've been talking about giving and generosity, which is more than just finance, generosity, it's time, it's encouragement, uh, it's service to, to one another and so on. Uh, but it does include our giving. Um, So this week, I was going to kind of wrap up what we've been talking about for the last three weeks. Having said that, uh, it's 11 o'clock, and so I don't want to keep us too uh, long. So if you can just go with me very, uh, very quickly to Galatians. Go with me to Galatians. We'll we'll change tact a little bit here, and we'll, we'll, we'll do it on the fly. On the fly. Here we go. Galatians. If you can go with me to Galatians chapter... Go to Galatians chapter 6 for me. Galatians chapter 6. And uh, I'm going to wrap this up as as quick as I can. Um, Galatians chapter 6. It says, brothers and sisters, if someone... uh, Hang on. Where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. You know this is live because it's it's all just happening on the run. It's all happening on the run. Give me a second, people. Just talk amongst yourselves. Talk amongst yourselves. I'm pretty sure it's Galatians 6. but I've got it written down somewhere here. Hey? Yeah, it is. It's Galatians 6. I was right. I was right. Galatians chapter 6. And uh, verse 7, uh, 8, and 9. It says, Do not be deceived. If you go back and look at the context of this, he's talking about generosity and, and so on. He says, Don't be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. You, you know, it doesn't matter which way we look at it in life. Uh, uh, there's this thing that, that many of the Bible writers talk about, many of the, the writers of these, these documents, they mention this thing, reaping and sowing, reaping and sowing, it, giving and receiving. And, and it's not just limited to... It, 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 so sometimes when we think about that, when someone stands up in a church and goes reaping and sowing, we go straight to the place of money, right? And then our hearts want to block off and we go, oh no, we've seen them tele-evangelists and preachers that, you know, give me a thousand, you'll get 10,000 and that's the way God works. That's not the way God works. I could give $100 to, uh, to, to the church today and, and there's no guarantee or promise that God will give me back financial blessing for that. There's no guarantee that every time we give something, what we get back is exactly what we gave, right? Sometimes we may, we may give encouragement Uh, The point that God is making and the point that these writers are making is whenever we give something to God, we always get something back way better. Amen? Something way better. Now, now keep in mind, we we looked at uh, uh, Luke 16 a few weeks ago where Jesus said that uh, money, material wealth, he said it's the least of riches. It's the least of riches. So so when we think of of, of sowing and reaping and giving, don't think of uh, giving and every time I get something back, it's got to be finances. Otherwise, why would I give to God? If you are a person that doesn't give and you're not generous because you've worked out that it doesn't always bounce back to you in financial dollars, therefore you don't give, let me say something. You, You have a perspective problem on what's really important in life. You have a perspective problem on what's really important in life. But here's the thing. There's a lot of hard stuff in this collection of ancient documents. Who who agrees with me? There's a lot of hard sayings and hard things in here. And and, and sometimes we don't really know what something is trying to say. You've got to dig around a bit. but, But even if I don't understand what something's trying to say, we can all agree that it's saying something. Amen? It's saying something. That's why it made it into this collection of ancient documents. And anyway, here's, here's what I want, to, want you to think about. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. He says, whoever sows to please their flesh, from the flesh will reap destruction. If our whole life is spent, if I only ever give encouragement for my own personal benefit. You ever have those sort of people? Though, the, 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 they're always, we, we have an Australian saying, you know, blowing wind up there. Well, you come along and I'll tell you how great you are, but it's really got nothing to do with you. It's, it's, it's me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to basically suck up to you, but it's really not about you. It's, it's about flat, we call it flattery. So encouragement is, when I give encouragement, encouragement is thrown and I want it to splat on you and land on you and stay on you and do something on you. Flattery is I want it to bounce back off you onto me, splat on me and do something for me. It's going to open a door for me or make me look better or give me opportunities that I wouldn't otherwise have. And, 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 and we're not called to flatter people. We, we, we are called to encourage. Flattery is very uh, much about self. And, and, and so looking at what he's saying here, 
He's saying that if we, if we sow to the flesh, if everything we do is always about us, he says, then, 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 then you'll end up reaping destruction. Because enough is never enough for us as human beings, amen? Enough is never enough. If, if, you, if you are waiting for everybody to tell you how great you are, to make you feel good, here's the thing. There will not be enough words coming out of people's mouths to fill that void. There just won't be. If, if you think that you need more money to be happy and satisfied and at peace, then there'll, there'll never be enough money. There'll never be enough money out there that can come your way to make you find a place of... I love what Paul said in, I think it's Philippians. Paul said this, he said, I've learnt the secret of contentment. He said, I know how to have much and I know how to have little. And he says, here's how I've learnt, here's the secret I've learnt. I can do all through Christ who strengthens me. I can be in either circumstance and I can be content with a lot and with little. That tells me something about even having a lot. People think that we'll naturally be content with a lot. Paul says, no, 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 I have to learn how to be content with a lot because enough is never enough. Enough is never enough. Anyway, he says, if you sow to the, please the flesh, from the flesh you reap destruction, whoever sows to please the spirit, from the spirit will reap eternal life. And then he says this, in verse nine, let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time, we'll reap a harvest if we do not give up. Just two quick things there that stand out to me. Number one, there's this thing called sowing and reaping. And it's mentioned in several passages by several different biblical writers. I don't get it all, but what I do know is this. One thing that's very clear, there's something that these Bible writers teach us and something that God wants to teach us about what you give out and what comes back. Amen? That there's something about giving. There's something about generosity. There's something about, about, about sowing to the right things, sowing to, 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 to God, sowing into good things. There's something about that and the ramification of what kind of bounces back and comes back into our world. It's very, very clear. I'm not telling you what bounces back to you. What I'm saying is that, that these writers are very clear from their own experience with God and walking with God is that here's what we've learned. If you sow to this, you'll reap destruction. But if you so into God, if you're investing a bit into God with your time, your encouragement, your service, your energy, and yes, even finance, he said something bounces back to you that's of God. Something comes back into your world that's way better than what you ever gave. And one of the reasons why we struggle to give is because we actually don't believe that. We think what we have to start with is the best. And so why would I give away? Because this is as good as it gets. And God goes, no, it's not as good as it gets. Trust me. Faith. I wonder how many of us miss out on miracles because we don't trust God. Because we don't want to step into a place where we actually end up dependent on God and give God a chance to come through. Ephesians 3.20, Paul the Apostle, this same guy that was killing Christians, had this amazing encounter with God, became a Christian, wrote two-thirds of the letters in this uh, uh, New Testament uh, uh, document, uh, ended up being killed for his faith. All he had to do was turn around and say, ah, Jesus story, just joking, I don't believe it anymore. And he, he would have lived a ripe old age, but he wouldn't because he was so convinced of the reality of Jesus, as are millions of Christians all around the world, even in places where today they're giving up their lives for that faith. All they've got to do is change their mind, but they won't because it's too real for them. And, 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 and this guy, this, this Apostle Paul, so convinced. And he said this in Ephesians 3.20, his letter to the Ephesian churches at the time. He said, uh, now to him, to God, who is able to do exceedingly abundantly, right? Now, who thinks that's a lot? That's, that, yeah, that's, that's a lot, right? Exceedingly abundantly to me is, uh, I mean, if I was Paul, I'd say, yeah, God can do a lot. Paul says, no, no, that doesn't explain it well enough. Now to him, God, who can do exceedingly abundantly, Right? Above all you can possibly ask, who's got, who can ask? I mean, think about what you could ask God. If, you, if God was in the room right now and you could ask him for some things in your world, think about what you could ask. Paul says, well, God can go exceedingly abundantly above your wildest suggestion, but he's not happy to stop there. He says, above all you can ask, and in case you're going to catch me on a technicality, above all you can ask or think. So he says, it's not just what you've got the courage and faith to ask, it's what you would even think in your wildest dream. The God that we serve can do abundantly more above and beyond all of that if we were trusting. And, and trust is not a concept, it's an action. 
Trust is not a concept, it's an action. I can sit here and say, I trust God all the days of my life. But if you follow me around for a week and watch my actions, you'll have a better idea of whether I actually trust God or not. Because trust is not about words, it's about actions. And, and, and here's what he says. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we'll reap a harvest. So the first thing we see, there is a definite connection between what comes out and what comes back into us. But the second thing, and here's what I, where I want to land for a couple of minutes before we, we go this morning. He says, do not be weary in doing good, for at the proper time we'll reap a harvest. At the proper time, the New King James Version says in due season. In other words, God says this, give, be generous, uh, 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 give out, invest into the kingdom, into the spirit. It's going to come back to you, but understand this, it comes back in the right season of your life. Amen? This is why he's saying don't grow weary in doing good because most people will do good and sit back with a tiny time frame and go, well, it better bounce back to me. And then what happens? It didn't come back in seven days, 10 days, two months. So they stop doing it. They stop doing good. They grow weary and they give up and they go back to their own old ways, back to whatever the default setting is. But he's saying here, don't grow weary. It's gonna come back, but you've gotta trust God for the right season to come back into your life. And how many of us miss out on what God wants to bring back into our life because we give up thinking God's doing nothing when God's saying, no, no, you've got no idea what I'm doing behind the scenes, but you've got to realise that it doesn't come back just when you want. It comes back in the right season determined by God, but trust me, it's coming back at you. It's coming back to you. In due season, in due season, I wonder how many of us have started a prayer life thinking, okay, well, preacher, you said praying makes a difference and God listens and he acts on prayers, so I'm going to pray. And we prayed for a day and then two days and then three days, a week, two weeks, maybe a month, we prayed for somebody to come to faith or, 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 or healing or a provision we needed or something to happen and then we give up and we stop praying because we think, oh, well, that didn't work and so we stop. And God's there going, keep praying. I promise that there's a return. There's something coming back. But wait, I know the right season. I know the right season. In due season, don't grow weary doing good. You picked up the Bible and you started reading it. And you thought, okay, I'm going to spend a bit of time each day in the Word of God and, 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 and you know, get the words of Jesus. I'm going to transform my mind by reading this and, and trying to you know, think more the way that I think God will. But then after a couple of weeks, you stop because maybe you, you, you're not remembering it or, or you think, well, I don't know. There's too many questions. I don't. And, and we start these things and we stop. God's going, no, no, keep going, keep going, keep going. Whatever you, what you're doing, sowing into the Spirit, it's going to come back to you. It will come back, but you've got to trust me that it's going to come back in due season at the proper time. At the proper time. We can be so instant sometimes. Look, don't we live in a world of instant? Live in a world of instant. I don't want to, ha I'm, I'm not, all the, all the teenagers here, I'm not having a go at you, right? Because you're not like this, I know you're not, Okay. But we want to go to university. I want to finish my four-year degree. And when I step out of it, I want to step into my dad's CEO job at the top of the food chain the second day of employment. I don't want to start at the bottom where dad started and work my way through the company. And maybe in 20 years' time, I'm the CEO. No, I want to step straight into the CEO with a corner office, two windows around, air conditioning. I want my own private jet and a brand new BMW. It's like, dude, You've had your degree for one day. Come on. Do your time. Just walk through and, 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 and trust God and learn and grow and develop. But we want everything instant right now. It's the world that we live in. Now, how many young, young couples, they, they look at, might look at, you know, if, you, if you're blessed, you might look at mum and dad and go, what a great marriage. They're great friends and they love each other and so on. And so you, you want to meet a guy or a girl and in the first week, you want to have that kind of an intimate relationship that's taken them 30 years and a lot of headbutting to get. But you want it straight away. And you flick each other after a week because well, it's not like that. But hang on a second. That wasn't like that either for about 28 years. It's how long it took to get here, you know. But we want it all instant. It's got to happen now. It's just the world we live in. It's, it's the world young people are growing up in. Remember the old days where you put a pie in the oven? It might take 20 minutes to cook a pie and now you just press a button and while you, you, you can cook a pie and make a cup of tea and change channels three times all at once. I mean, it's amazing. Once upon a time, remember the good old days? You used to have to get up and turn the TV channel? 
tick, 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 tick. Anyone have one of the tick, 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 yeah? And, and you had channels, and, and, and it used to bug me when we lived out west because that'd be the channel. You have to go through five nothings to get to that. So why don't you just put it next to it? One click. I've got to go five clicks. So what, what, you're wasting my time here. I remember when Dire Straits toured Australia, their last uh, big world tour, and they landed in Sydney back in, oh, geez, it would have been the 80s. I was living in Mudgee. And I remember getting a V. Remember VHS? Anyone remember VHS players? Remember the big cassette? I, I, I bought a blank cassette tape and I put it in that night and I sat up all night watching the Dire Straits concert. The last one was on Channel 9 and I had a, a, a VHS player and it was on record. And do you remember when you used to actually have to have... Things had to be connected to each other to work. Do you remember that? No, you don't. Remember, you had to have a cord. So I've got the TV there, VHS, and I'm sitting about this far away because the cords were never that long. And every time an ad came on, I'd press pause on the record. <laughs> you know? And then I'd just be sitting there, I don't want to miss it, don't want to miss it. And then you, you go to the loo or something, you come back and it's halfway through a song and you're angry at yourself, but you can't get it back now. Because it's not like Fox or something where you press a button and go back. It's gone. And I've still got that VHS tape in my garage. Still there. Still there. Dire Straits, one of the best concerts ever. We want everything instant. Everything instant. We want the result to happen now, straight away. Straight away. And when it doesn't, what happens? We grow weary in doing good. We just want to give up. We just want to stop. And you know what? 2,000 years ago, apparently the same thing was happening. And Paul's saying to these people, don't grow weary, people. Don't grow weary in doing good. Don't grow weary in doing good. I, I, know, it, I, I know that you know, sometimes you're, you're wondering, is it ever going to happen? Is God ever going to reveal himself? Is God ever going to answer that prayer? Is he ever going to speak? Is he ever going to meet that need? Am I ever going to get out of this rut? Am I ever going to... He says, don't, don't, don't grow weary in doing those good things, serving other people, uh, encouraging others in, in, in giving of your time, your service. And yes, I'll, I'll add it, and giving financially to, to your church. Because the government's not throwing money at us to keep the air cons on. The government's not giving us money to give to the religious education and the kids that are in the school. The government's not giving us money to help plant churches overseas. The government's not doing all that stuff. God's people are, and it's always been like that way back from Old Testament times. Build the temple. Look after it now. Done my bit. You guys look after it. Don't grow weary in doing good. And by the way, you don't always have to see the good you've done. Amen? We do it by faith. And praise God for those moments where we get to see the fruit or the result. Amen? Praise God for those moments. I was in India. Uh, this would have been, uh, gosh, before we were married, back when I was 20-something. Living over in India... And we used to host teams. They would come over from, uh, from overseas and they would come to Nagpur, central India, where we were. And we would take them out to villages and so on. We would go and we would, we would do all kinds of things. The, the, these students would go and preach and teach and talk about Jesus out in the villages and the slums where they'd never heard of Jesus. And I remember one particular place we went out there and we took them out to this village and we're, we're, we're out there, we're, we're preaching Jesus and the, 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 the head of that village, the chief of that village didn't want us there. I didn't find this out till later on. The, the, our interpreter didn't tell me till afterwards, which can be very dangerous because I've been in other villages where they start picking up stones and that's when you realise, oh, you don't want us here, do you? That's we Come on, in the, in the Jeep, people, let's go. You know. One day I had these two guys, I was dumb enough to ride my motorbike to a village while the students were in a Jeep and I got on my bike to take off because we were in a hut and they all started gathering outside with sticks and stones and the interpreter said, okay, this is it, let's go straight. Anyway, I jump on my bike, so they realise they can't stop the Jeep, so they straddle my front wheels and my motorbike and stand there. And I'm thinking, oh, Jesus, if, if, I'm sure you're there. That's why I'm here, so you've got, you got to help me here. Anyway, the Jeep took off in such a way, nearly hit them all, they parted, and I just, boom, took off. But we went to this village, and we're there. And, and, and these, these students, they, 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 uh, uh, there was an there was American and a Canadian girl. They would have been about that tall. One, I just remember one had black hair, one had blonde hair. That's all I remember about them. don't even remember their names. They only stayed with us for a couple of weeks. And, and they did their dramas and they, they, they shared the story of Jesus. And at the end of that, we would always say, God's big enough to reveal himself to you. So if you, if you would like God, you know, come forward. We'd love to pray for you. We're going to ask 
Jesus who's revealed himself. We're going to ask him to reveal himself to you. So we would end every time we went out with something like that. Anyway, I'm standing there and there's, there's these people all around us and I notice a, a, a lady came and grabbed these two girls and took them off between the huts. And of course, we were responsible for them. So I thought, there's no way I'm letting them go out the back of nowhere, you know. Um, not good. So I walked away, fought my way through the crowd and I walked down the aisle and followed them and we ended up going to this hut. We ducked heads and went into the hut. We're in this hut and there's a lady laying down on the floor on on a mat and they shared a story through an interpreter. They said this lady has given birth, uh, I think it was seven times, six times and within five minutes of birth, all six kids have died. She's now pregnant with baby number seven. Would you please pray and maybe your Jesus can do something and she can have a child. And these two girls, this Canadian-American girl, they, they, they walked over and they just laid hands on her. And they just said the simplest of prayers, you know. Jesus, have compassion. Would you heal this lady and keep this baby? That was it. I didn't feel a goose bump. I didn't, you know, hair didn't raise on my hand. A cloud didn't descend in the room. That was it. Up we went and we left. Finished, jumped in the bus, went. Flew back to wherever they came from, and now one of them's back in America, probably. The other one's probably back in Canada. I've never seen them to this day. Twelve months later, another team came to Nagpur, and I was organizing an itinerary to take them out. And this pastor friend of mine said, Why don't we go back to that village and let's see if we can get in there again? So we jump in the bus with them all in the van, we drive there. This time we get there, the chief comes running out to us as soon as he sees us. Big smile calls us into his house and I'm, I'm a bit weary here thinking oh dude what, what, you're going to poison my tea or something drags us into his hut makes us a cup of tea and everything we're sitting there and it's just this tense feeling on my part because I'm so weary thinking man you didn't want us anywhere near here last time and then he begins to uh, you know I'm so glad you're here give me a second I'm going to go and call everyone in the village to come so they can hear your story about Jesus this time we're going to get everyone to come and then I remembered oh what about that girl so I said to the pastor with me, can you ask him, last year there was a lady up the back, prayed for her with the children. And he said, yeah. He said, I'll go and get her too. He said, she's out the back with the baby on her back working in the fields. We'll make sure she comes along as well. And this woman gave birth. The baby's still alive to my knowledge to this day, a miracle. And he acknowledged the miracle, which is why he opened his arms to us and said, you need to come and tell all of us about Jesus. I'm going to make sure as head of the village, every person comes because they need to hear this thing about Jesus, you know. Now, here's the thing. That, those two girls have no idea. Think about that. Those two girls have no idea to this day that there's a baby that was born healthy and a whole village opened themselves up to the story of Jesus and the power of God because of a simple little prayer they prayed in a hut one day a few years ago. You just don't know where what you do will end up going. But you keep doing it. You keep doing it. And and, and just as I close today, let me just encourage you, Arise Church, don't grow weary in doing good. Don't grow weary in doing good. Don't grow weary in loving one another. Don't grow weary. Don't grow weary in in, in loving your neighbours and your family. Even those that rub you the wrong way, that think this Jesus stuff is a load of baloney, don't grow weary in doing good with them. Don't grow weary in prayer. Pray. Don't grow weary in getting into the word of God. Don't grow weary. You can jump up, Nick. You can jump up on the guitar, mate. I'm going to wrap up. Don't grow weary in serving one another. Don't grow weary in prayer. Don't grow weary in prayer. Don't grow weary in giving. Whatever we sow, it bounces back to us some way, shape, or form. Don't grow weary in encouraging people. Don't grow weary in giving encouragement. Don't grow weary in seeking God. Don't grow weary in lifting up your needs to him and petitioning him. We have a Father in heaven that loves us, in spite of us. God is good, even when it looks like the church isn't. God is. Don't grow weary in discovering who God is. If you're here and and you don't know Jesus, I'm I'm encouraging you. Explore it. Check it out for yourself. I don't believe in accidents, coincidences and luck. I I spent enough time thinking about that stuff. As soon as I started getting that stuff out of my vocabulary and started going, hang on, now there's a real God who's in control of the universe. I'm going to start looking for God in things. It's amazing how easy he is to find and how easy he is to see. When I start acknowledging that God can speak, it's amazing how easy it is to start to hear him. 
Don't grow weary in doing good in this place. In due time, people. In due time. And the due time is not your time. It's God's time. Jesus said to, to a, a crowd, he said, don't worry about your life, what you're going to eat, what you're going to wear, all that stuff. He posed two questions. He said, is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? More than that. Okay. And he said, look at the sparrows, look at the birds, look at the way I look after that stuff. And he asked a second question, are you not of more value than that? So trust me. Trust me. Keep doing good. Don't grow weary. Don't stop. Pray. Give. Encourage. Love. Have grace. Mercy. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. In due time, the promise of your heavenly Father, in due time, in the proper season, he says it's going to come back to you. And what's going to come back to you is going to way surpass whatever it is that you gave out. Because that's what God does. He takes two loaves and fishes. It goes into the hands of Jesus. He breaks it, hands it back. And when it comes back, mate, it feeds thousands. Because that's what he does. To him who was able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we could possibly ask or think. If you're here this morning and you don't know Jesus, can I encourage you? Maybe grab someone that does. Ask him the question. Tell me about this Jesus dude. Just tell me the story. Because we're growing up in a culture now where that story has been so distorted or it's being silenced. And I'll guarantee most of what you heard about Jesus, I'll guarantee this, 95% of what you think you know is not true. It's not true. You want to know about Jesus? Talk to someone that's walking with him. Pick up the documents written by people that walked with him and believed in him and trusted him. Don't go to Google or Brad Pitt. It's not cool. You genuinely want to know about something? Go to the places where those people know that something. I want to get my car fixed. I'm not going to go and ask Judy also. No disrespect, Judy, but I'm not. If I want to know where to get thousand pound earrings, I'm going to talk to Judy. Don't grow weary, people, in doing good. And if you don't know Jesus, I'm encouraging you this morning. Ask the questions. If you don't want to do that when you're alone tonight or this afternoon, why don't you just quietly close your eyes for three seconds and say, God, if you're there, show me. Let's just see what sort of journey you go on. I, I went on a pretty wild one. I'm still on it. And it goes back to that moment where I opened up my heart to the possibility that he might be there. And with all sincerity, I said, if you're there, I want to know. Let me know. He did. If you're here this morning and you uh, have needs, things going on in your world, I'd, we'd love to open up the front this morning and love to pray for people this morning. And we're going to pray to a God that can do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think. We're going to pray to Him. We're going to ask Him to do whatever it is that you need in your world. We're going to ask God to come. We're going to ask God to touch you. We're going to ask God to do. Uh, we're going to stand with you in faith and believe. If you don't want to come forward for prayer, I get that. Why don't you grab somebody else here? It doesn't matter who prays for you. There's nothing more... more supernatural about anyone's hands it's the God of heaven that answers the prayer it's the God of heaven that heals it's God that sets free it's not us so if you're not comfortable coming up the front that's fine or you don't want to grab somebody here don't walk out of this place and just go oh that was fun no no we, we don't gather just to have fun we gather because we believe in God we believe in the power of God and I want, I want to walk out that door different than when I walked in that's my prayer amen so Father thank you for this morning Lord I want to thank you for our time together God, I pray for each person in this room. Holy Spirit, if you're speaking to people, they're feeling that little... For me, God, it was butterflies. It felt like there was a bunch of butterflies going around inside my chest. And I've learned since then that was you. That's the Holy Spirit speaking to me. Lord, if there's anybody here like that this morning, I pray they would not walk out this door without doing business on whatever point it is that's rumbling around inside of them, Father. And God, I want to thank you for each person here. God, you love them. John 3.16. You so loved us that you gave your only son, that whoever believes in you would not perish, but we could have eternal life in heaven with you. So Father, bless each person as they go. Keep us safe this week. And Lord, help us to be a blessing to others this week. And God, the greatest thing we could do 
is to bless somebody with the good news of Jesus, to bless somebody with a story about a God that so loves them as they are, not as they should be. Give us a chance to tell people that great story in these next seven days, I pray. Everybody said? Amen. 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 Bless you guys. Uh